Dan Curry, I'm admiring your row of Emmys there behind you. Yeah, there are a couple there. <laughs> I know, I cut, cut you up short. Are those all for uh, various Trek series? Uh, yeah, these were uh, for Star Trek um, and uh, different series. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons that uh, there are so many Emmys standing there is that I had the opportunity to work with so many wonderful artists and uh, so right. many great crew members and of course uh, the excellence of the cast in every series was certainly a factor and the and the stories so these uh, are not a a testament to me but they're a testament to the uh, wonderful people i had the opportunity to work with right and every one of those represents the i mean everyone got emmys as part of the team uh, yeah whatever right. the academy allows whatever whatever it was you know but we're here in your home and uh the the timely news is next generation is Back in the news, people are all raving about the look of the new Blu-ray uh, remasters, and you were brought in to work on... There's a lot of work to do, and you were brought in to work on part of the project. Right. The, the first two seasons have uh, been finished, and season one was done by CBS Digital, and season two was done by Illuminate Hollywood. And uh, Illuminate Hollywood uh, asked me to come on and consult with them and work with the uh, digital artists who were... Um, redoing the visual effects. The whole purpose philosophically was to recreate the the spirit of the original material, mm -hmm. not reimagine it, and basically do it as an homage. So we tried to avoid what would be the equivalent of airbrushing over the Sistine Chapel ceiling <laughs> to brighten it up. And uh, so we went back into the original negative uh, of all footage, both the dramatic and the motion control miniature and, and element photography, and retransferred it in high definition. And the the material looks terrific. The uh, the dramatic scenes look great. The uh, we were able to because of the the uh, wonderful advances in color timing, able to go in and and regrade the the colors and the the shows look terrific and going back into the original motion control photography of, of miniatures so all the space shots with only a few exceptions were the done with the original model photography and only if uh, an element or a piece could not be mm -hmm. found did we recreate it digitally the word is getting out people forget that even to make the original budget to get the show done um, in 1987 the the uh, concept was to compose on video, so you automatically derezzed your you lost your picture quality when you had your I mean you, to composite elements see or visual right. effects and the the live shooting was brought down and and so it looked good back in the day but it always suffered so just getting back to the film elements makes it look incredible. Yeah, it should be noted that uh, Paramount made a very courageous decision when they were doing Next Generation, and up until that time most shows wanted to archive on film and have a film negative as the master of the show and Gene and the other people at Paramount decided that the volume of work necessary and the increase in audience sophistication after the brilliant work done on Star Wars by the people at ILM audiences demanded a certain level of of quality and, and work. The one thing that I've been talking about to people that I think ought to be pointed out is, and we were just chatting about it, was what's made this remastering and Blu-ray upgrade doable is the fact that those original elements, both live action and the, the effects elements, were all archived so well, especially all your visual effects elements, because they can go back not just to the, the completed jigsaw puzzle, but they can go back to the individual pieces, and that's a testament to you guys' system, and, and you were talking about that earlier. Yeah, and uh, we had uh, really great editors and great assistant editors who were careful about logging all that information. And then we had Ed Hoffmeister, who was the visual effects editor, and he was the one responsible for logging and making sure that things were stored in a way that they could be found. And one of the reasons that Ed did that was that he, as well as most of us working on the show, recognize that Star Trek is greater than the sum of the parts. It, it mm -hmm. has a, a great cultural significance beyond being a TV show. And it's changed the way millions of people think about
technology, think about the future, and even think about uh, social issues. And so Ed and the rest of us were as careful as possible in keeping track of all that material, uh, just assuming that someday somebody may want to go back in there, and uh, it worked out. Things in, in those days, be, before the, the era of computers, we had very simple technology. Sometimes we would use a, a physical model of a planet. Uh, sometimes um, uh, uh, Gary Hutzel would uh, take uh, flour and throw it on wax paper and photograph that and project it onto a white ball and then re-photograph that with a motion control camera. And then we had a simple uh, system that kind of called a Sony System G that allowed to take a flat image and uh, project it uh, virtually onto a section of a mm -hmm. sphere. So sometimes for planets we would use paintings, satellite photographs provided by NASA and other materials. Now, I, and I also know about the famous, I think we, I have it in my companion book, about the, the, the dog poop planet. Was yeah, the well, famous one. well, let's talk about this first. Um, I, I, yeah. And so one of the planets, uh, I have found this rock in my garden, and it had really beautiful textures, and I was looking at some shots of moons of different uh, uh, planets in our solar system, right. and this kind of looked like one of them. So I did a macro shot of this and then projected that onto a partial sphere. And it was one of those planets that when we were redoing se Season 2, we found that... Uh, the the planet didn't look good when it was blown up into into high def. It just looked a little too mushy. And I remembered that I'd saved the rock when we moved from our uh, old house to the, <laughs> our current residence. And so everybody thought it was funny that we saved the rock. So I rephotographed it and actually recreated it in ex the same way we did the original. Now, what pl what episode was that? Do you remember? No. Okay. Well, thanks for taking well, some time with us. I hope you all enjoyed the show. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan.